Hi guys, welcome back to our AS Weekends. Today's video is all about the Thracians. Yes, the Thracian boyos in-depth visuals, in-depth guide and view of all these new beautiful Thracian units in RAS version 0.6. And of course, I have already covered the Adrician and the Bithynian rosters, so go check that out below while you like and subscribe. And let's get into the video. So we know why we're here, guys, to cover the Thracian boyos, and I cannot wait because they look so good and they look so unique, so different from a lot of the other unit rosters we've been seeing recently. Of course, the Greeks. They're all going to be very similar because they're Greeks. So the Thracians. I'm so excited to have a look at these boys. So let's start with the Thracian generic roster. The roster that all the Thracians are going to get as their base roster. And you're going to see these guys to start with. So let's start with the Thracian slingers and you can see looking a bit worse for wear these guys aren't they uh they look a little bit scared a little bit uh a, bit, a little bit timid and you know they don't have any armor and they're actually wearing their bum bags on different hips depending on them of course i love the thracian designs on these robes and on their capes Unfortunately, with the Thracians, the capes don't denote eliteness, guys, unlike the Greeks. <laughs> because look at their stats. Two morale, three melee attack, three missile attack, with six total defense. They can hide in long grass, though, guys. Uh, and they do get a combat bonus in woods. But, <laughs> yeah, these guys, nowhere near as good as the Greek slingers. So, as the Thracians are going to be limited by that missile factor there, you're not really going to get really good slingers like armor piercing slingers like we've seen with some of the greek factions and that sort of thing so let's move across to the thracian archers and following on very similarly from the thracian slingers these boys oh what what <laughs> this guy this guy is confident man this guy is confident what is he it's like that scene in Greece, okay? Oh my god. <laughs> Calm down, brother. Calm down. But yeah, these guys are very similar to the Slingers in terms of their uh, stats. Their look, though, I love the little different bows that you get for the Thracians compared to the Greeks. No a huge amount of capage, but I do love the design on these capes. Really cool indeed. But of course, <laughs> it's gonna be, isn't it? Two morale, three melee attack. They do get seven missile attack, which is actually better than a lot of the Greek archers who start with six. And they do get long-range missiles. So, honestly, these guys are not too bad, even though they will literally run if they even see the enemy coming over the hill. Never mind if the enemy get close. So, yeah, do be careful with these boys because six defense is not good. Um, and clearly this guy, yeah, he he's taunting the enemy, but he's got no armor. So uh, we'll leave that one be for now. So let's move on to the Long Spearman. Oh, no, sorry. We'll go on to the Thracian Peltast first. A little sneak preview of what's coming up. The Thracian Peltast. This, of course, is a mercenary unit for a lot of factions. You might see it dotted around uh, the Antigonids, dotted around the Seleucids maybe as well in their Thracian lands, um, as well as, of course, the other Thracian uh, guys in the game. And, yeah, really, really cool. I do love the look on these boys. And I believe we've seen these in the Adrician roster as well. But look at them. They just look fantastic, don't they? All these units always look fantastic. Now, the key thing with these, only 6 morale and 11 defense. But that melee attack, that 9 melee attack doesn't seem so high. But it is, of course, armor-piercing, boys. Armor-piercing secondary attack, which is really cool. Indeed. Very nice. So that armor piercing does actually make these guys quite good. De even though their stats are not that not that great. Especially against armored units, of course. Very cool indeed. I do like to see that variation. Not so great stats, but that armor piercing changes the game a little bit for these boys. So let's have a look at the long spearmen next. They're a new unit um, that, of course, um, they do finally found the historians have been trawling for these units for so long and they finally found information that the thracians did in fact use spear units and here it is represented in the game because previously i don't believe there were any spear units for the thracians 
and really, really unique design on these boys. We've got some of the bronze helms. We've got some of these plumed Greek helms that we see, probably looted off the bodies of Greeks that they have killed. Look at that little Thracian clasp there. Very nice indeed. Lovely little design on there. All these little details. We love it, guys. You know we love it every time we come back because fantastic. They've also got the tiny little shields, some of them, the Greek-style shields rather than the Thracian shields. But they do look really cool, these guys. They're really long and thin spears as well. Um, and, of course, they're an okay unit. They're 23 defense. They're kind of your levy infantry unit, really. Um, 12 morale and 11 melee attack. They may charge without orders, of course, although these guys... You don't really want them to get in the charge because, you know, they're not the most fantastic unit. No armor, good defense skill, so probably good against armor-piercing units, but a decent shield. And, of course, they can do skill trom as well, which I don't think we've seen before. So it's interesting to see that in the game as well. So if you want skill trom, this guy's ready for it. He's ready to form a skill trom and get surrounded by cavalry. So, <laughs> nice. Fantastic. So on to the Thracian infantry. Or should I say, the Thracian Romphioforoi. And I said it pretty right, in my opinion. <laughs> Anyone who's actually Thracian can let me know. Or Greek. Um, but the Thracian Romphioforoi. And these guys. We are getting into the meat and tatties of the Thracian roster here. Potatoes. Um, yes. And uh, looks like me. After I've not had any sleep in the morning over here. Um, but yes, uh, really, really, really good unit. So exciting. So, so exciting. Look at all these bonuses, guys. Frightened nearby enemy infantry. Powerful charge. Very good stamina as well. Armor piercing. Secondary weapon. So I believe that references their Romfe... Uh, Rom fire sword, of course, because look at it. Look at it. It's a spicy weapon, and it's gonna do some damage. This is the unit you want to build your armies around, guys. Not the best defense of 25, but that attack, 14 melee attack with armor piercing stat and also 14 morale. These guys are going to be brutal. And Frightened Nearby Enemy is so strong in this game as well. These guys are really what you want to be uh, want to be getting when you get into the game. Because these guys are going to be mean and scary to nearly every single roster out there. Nearly every single one. Especially the armored rosters that you're going to be facing in Greece. I cannot wait to use these guys, honestly. They are fantastic units. I have tried them out as Bithynia, and I can tell you that they fucking shred. They absolutely shred. <laughs> they are very good, guys. Very good. And I love the look of them. They do look mean, don't they? And I think they should, because honestly, these guys are brutal. But not quite as brutal as our next unit. And I just want you to take a look at these absolute beastly boys that we see in front of us here. The absolute chads of the Thracian unit roster are right in front of us here, guys. Although the Thracian noble cavalry might have something to say about it. But just look at them. Look at these boys. They are fantastic looking, aren't they? One of my favorite looking units in the game. And they've got plumage. They've got capage. That's how we know that they're an absolute beast of a unit. The Thracian Infantry Guard. Oh, dearie me. Look at those stats. That is going to make me faint. 30 defense. 21 morale. 19 melee attack with an armor-piercing weapon. And they're still classed as light infantry. So they're still going to be very fast. <laughs> these guys. These guys are brutal. Remember though guys, some of these stats are work in progress. Maybe changed. But I don't think they're going to be changed a huge amount. So of course, again, frightened nearby enemy infantry. Effective against armor. Bonus fighting cavalry as well. Ah, God. Honestly. <laughs> these boys. If you can get these guys in your armies, they may be... I don't believe they're post-reform, but they may be. But if you can get these guys in your army, 
I honestly can't think of many units that could do much damage to these boys. These guys are going to stand up against Celts, against the best the Celts can offer as well. So, honestly, <laughs> I can't say much more. They look fantastic, don't they? And I love these helms. Look at these boys. Really, really cool. And while we're here as well, guys, again, massive thank, thank? Massive thanks to the art team and Balbor once again for getting these units ready, rushing um, it through to try and get these units ready so I can bring them all to you guys. And massive thanks to them. But look at these boys. Honestly, these are, these are fantastic units, guys. If you face them on battle, be scared. Be very afraid because these guys are going to shred, shred, shred. I think your best option, honestly, is missiles. But they do have 10 defense against missiles. So Javis are really the only thing that's going to stop these guys dead. Apart from that, they're just going to have a good time slicing your, slicing your armies to pieces. <laughs> but let's have a look now at the cavalry for the generic Thracian roster. And we have the Thracian Hipparchontistae. Yes. These boys, pretty much the similar to the Prodromoi, but for the Thracians. And again, we see unique designs. Look at those sleeves. We've not really seen those before. And the different patterns, once again. I do like that helm you're wearing, sir. Very nice indeed. Uh, but yeah, loving it. Loving the look of these boys. Even if they're not so elite, every unit is pretty unique, isn't it? Really cool to see. 9 morale, 13 defense, and uh, yeah, 4 armor, not great, but they are going to be a standard missile cavalry unit, but you might want to take something else instead, which we'll talk about in a bit. Then we have the Thracian Light Lancers, and looking at these guys, you can tell they're very light. Like, <laughs> where is their armor? They don't have it. They don't need it. They really don't need it, guys, because these guys are going to be extremely fast. 28 charge. Very good indeed. 12 morale. Not fantastic, but not terrible. 11 melee attack and 11 alt attack is okay for a cavalry unit. It's decent, to be fair. 15 defense. Not fantastic. Mainly defense skill. A tiny bit of armor. But of course, these guys are all for the charge. So early game, they're going to do plenty well. They're going to do plenty well uh, against especially light infantry charging in the back. These guys are going to do a lot of damage. They've got to be a smash and grab unit, guys. Don't try and give them extended melee because they will just die by their lack of defense. So you've got to charge them in and get rid of them straight away. Get out, charge back in. It's going to be the hammer and anvil repeatedly. But quite a decent unit for a very light cavalry unit. So let's move on to the Thracian Seeker Cavalry, which of course is a new unit. It's not only going to be AOR uh, and Thracian, but a Merc unit for the Diadochi as well. The Diadochi, should I say. The uh, the uh, successors to Alexander. So these boys. Really cool, in fact. I do like the look of them. Again, once again, a very unique look for these boys. With the yellows going through the shields. A lot of yellows. I do love... I just love the Thracian sort of designs and patterns and stuff. I think it's really cool. Really cool. Um, really nice to look at. And again, these guys. Yes! Yes, yes, yes. So I believe the Sicker is the weapon that they have. I could be wrong. Someone let me know down uh, below. Um, and yeah, but I believe the Sicker is the weapon that they use. It's this curved little sword here. And it's really cool. And because of that, 23 defense. Again, decent for a cavalry unit. 25 charge. Very good as well. They've got a couple of javies to throw before they get into the enemy. 14 morale is good as well. 12 melee attack. But remember, guys, this is a 12 melee attack with an armor-piercing sword. So, again, armor-piercing goes through the Thracians really, really well. A lot of Thracian units with the armor-piercing. Really cool to see. And it's going to be especially useful once you've built the Thracian Empire up. And you're going to have to face a heavily armored opponent like Rome, like late game Seleucids or late game Ptolemies. Really, really useful then. So very cool indeed. An armor piercing cavalry unit. And honestly, I don't think we've seen any of those quite yet. So let's move on to the Thracian noble cavalry. And these guys are very good as well. The Thracians in general, strong boys 
Really strong boys. Uh, and in fact, the Pontic Pentapolis actually get this unit as well, guys. So do check out the Greek 29 factions video where we went over all those factions and what unique units they have. And they actually have access to these boys. But they are the nobles, the nobles of the Thracians. And you can tell with the intricate designs on the helms, the shields, the bronze breastplates. And we've got actually some scaled or um, some chainmail armor here as well. Very cool indeed. Yeah, chainmail should I say. But again, those lovely intricate designs on the helms there. Very, 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 very cool, uh, of course. Oh, really nice. I love the look of these boys, and they are a fantastic unit. 30 defense, which is awesome for a cavalry unit. 35 charge, 18 morale, 14 melee attack, and 14 missile attack. So honestly, with that armor piercing, it's a bit of a toss-up between these two, but Probably overall, the Noble Cavalry are going to win out. They've got that extra couple of Javis as well to throw into the enemy, like the Sicker do. But, oh god, some good units in the Thracian rosters, guys, isn't there? So let's move on to the Thracian General. Yes, the boys. And they've got a bit of horse armor on as well. Very cool indeed. Nice helms. Oh, we got a bit of a winged helm there. I always, or a horned helm. Something I love to see. Very nice. Very nice boyos over here. No shield buffs on the shields today. But 31 defense. They've got a couple of uh, missiles to throw. A couple of javis. Uh, but when I say a couple, quite a lot. <laughs> Six. So I think that's seven. Should be seven uh, on the javis there. So yeah. Very nice indeed. Really cool. No, it is actually six, isn't it? 14 melee attack, 18 morale. But armor-piercing secondary weapon again. So, really, this guy is going to shred Greek generals for fun. Really, really going to shred Greek generals for fun. So, really, when you're playing in Greece, guys, avoid the Thracians as much as possible. Because <laughs> you're going to not have a great time. Or use anti-armor-piercing units, such as lightly armored units that have high attack. Such as mercenary falcsmen and all that sort of thing. So after the cultural generics, the meat and potatoes of the roster, we are going to move on to the unique units of each faction that might be AOR for your Thracian faction of the Adrissians of Bithynia as well, and maybe some Greeks, depending on how those Greeks act, of course. But here we are with the Paeonian Cavalry, and we are with Paeonia, which is located here. Now, the Paeonian Cavalry, of course... The Paeonian culture in general was kind of separate from the Thracian culture and was heavily, heavily Hellenized at the time. So they're kind of a Thracian and Hellenic mix of, uh, of uh, peoples. And we can see that in the units here. As we can see, they've got the horse archer, uh, the horse archer, the horse armor. Uh, but they've also got a few Thracian cloaks, but Greek helms as well. And a few people sporting sort of more Greek looking armor. But I do really love the looks on these boys. And we can see the nice Thracian cloaks as well. But the Paeonian Cavalry, a very decent cavalry unit. Again, armor piercing with that secondary weapon. So in this case, that's the weapon that they take out after the spears go into the fight. 14 morale though, 12 melee and 12 ult with 23 defense. And a 33 charge is fantastic. So the Thracians really going in. Full shock. These rosters, guys, if you ever play the Thracians, it's all about shock and morale shock. If you stay in the fight for a long time, unless you've got really elite troops like the Romphophoroi and the Infantry Guard, they're not going to last quite as long because of their low defense. So they really are all about the shock, guys. The morale shock and that armor piercing against armored units of the Greeks. So really use them in that way. Try and morale shock the enemy as much as possible but these guys do look fantastic don't they thank you Pionia, for giving us such cool cool looking cavalry indeed but next to them we have two agrianian units and the agrianians were a Pionian tribe who didn't really have a home but they were heavily recruited by macedon since alexander and also, of course, the Agrianian archers were found in the service of the Seleucid Empire as well. These guys loved a bit of a scrap and loved fighting for a Greek, it seems. But, of course, we have the Agrianian infantry here, which... Oh, God, I, 
Honestly, guys, I love the look of the Thracians. Really cool. I just love these patterns. They are so, so nice. Really cool. These guys have got their little helm. They've got the clasps and everything as well. These tiny units and details are always there. Uh, and I absolutely love the look of these boys. Indeed. Look at them. Very nice. Indeed. But these guys, they're a decent sort of peltasty sort of unit with uh, seven javis. 11 missile attack for those javis, which is good. 14 melee attack and 13 morale with that armor-piercing secondary weapon again. So these are kind of a upgraded version of the Thracian Peltas. Only 21 defense. And that's what you can see, guys, throughout. Low defense, high attack. These boys all about the shock, the Thracians, like I said before. But we also have the Agrianian archers over here. And these are a bit of a better option than your standard Thracian archers. Very cool indeed. This guy, this guy is just like, oh my god. He's dead inside right now. He really is not into the battle. Some of these guys are a bit more focused. He is just daydreaming, bro. But anyway, the Agrianian archers, six morale, five melee attack, nine missile attack, with 160 missile range, which is great, but only 12 defense. They're going to die very quickly to missiles themselves or or indeed whenever they get into melee but a decent archer unit for early game nonetheless so a bit of a better option if you can get these guys rather than uh, the standard thracian archers that we've seen so guys let's move on to the Bessie and the Bessie as well as the Maidy and the Denthalate who have no unique units but are factions in the game were more known for the sort of raiding and harassing tactics being in the rugged hills and mountains that you can see where they are now these factions are kind of more hardy more tribal um you know more sort of fluid in their movements that sort of thing than the other so-called civilized thracians of adrissia kabile and the asti uh, and we can see that here here they are the bessian swordsmen and i believe we've got the seeker sword there as well so let's have a look at these guys they are very cool indeed. Not much armor. Only four armor as we can see. Most of it with the helm. Not much armor on the body. They don't need it really because they're still quite scary anyway. Again, we get the armor piercing for their sword or their spear. Uh, for their sword as we can see here. Very cool indeed. And again, just look at them. They look fantastic, don't they? 14 morale, 13 melee attack, 13 missile attack for those two javis, and 24 defense, a lot of which is their shield and their defense skill, because they have the big Thurios shield, as we can see here. Very cool indeed. These guys are really cool, and they can taunt as well. Um, and they have a powerful charge, 10 charge. I mean, that's okay, about similar to Hoplites. So, yeah, not amazing charge, but very cool unit nonetheless. A bit of a lighter sort of shock unit there and like i say all these units are all about shock all about that armor piercing uh but let's move on to the di which were an elite tribal warrior group that was part of the bessian confederation of mountain and hill tribes they were considered fanatics and were known in antiquity for their swordsmanship so let's have a look at them and you can tell they're elite can't you straight away look at them they are stunning, are they not? Beautiful unit. I love the uh, the, uh, the chainmail again. Some of them don't even have shields, guys. They're that hard. They don't need shields. <laughs> they are a scary, scary bunch of chads, aren't they? A scary bunch of boyos ready to charge the enemy. Let's have a look at their stats then. Are they going to live up? to their luck and yes they are 17 morale 16 melee attack which is armor piercing 14 missile attack for two javis and they've got the they've got the armor piercing weapons a lot of different weapons that we see on show we've got the seeker we've got this sort of curved sword as well we've got the rom for four the rom fire as well for some of the ah oh, that's a bit of a longer sword someone let me know what that one's called down there don't believe anyone is wielding a falx but yeah a bit of a mix of weapons they kind of choose the weapon that they want they're that elite they're like the sas they can choose whatever weapon that they want uh, rather than a weapon given to them 
and a very scary bunch of blokes. 32 defense. So these guys are really going to stand up even against the, uh, the uh, infantry guard or the royal guard of the Adrissians and Bithynians. And it, they look scary. Scary, scary bunch of boys. Scary bunch of boys. They don't actually scare nearby enemy infantry, though. So do bear that in mind compared to the run for Foroy or the infantry guard. So that is one uh, thing that they have against them compared to those boys. But nevertheless, a very elite unit. So let's move on to the Kabyle. So Kabyle was a Macedonian colony. And, that, and of course, that means it has access to some more Macedonian style troops. But on the city level, uh, they, you know, so sort of... They were a Macedonian colony in terms of the city, but they were still Thracian in terms of their ethnicity and the tribe that they were part of. Um, now, they are located here, kind of in the middle of a rock, between a rock and a hard place, Pontus and the Seleucids. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it's still a pretty cool nation and a fun one. So let's look at the Kabylan Lancers over here. And they have some darn big lances, don't they? Jesus Christ. Almost almost phalangites with the size of those spears. Um, and yeah, very cool indeed. Look at the look on these boys. The bronze breastplate once again. 14 morale, 12 melee attack, 11 alt attack, 23 defense, 35 charge though. So a really strong charging unit. It does class as heavy cavalry. So they're going to be a bit slower than some of the lighter cavalry that we've seen. And we can see the Greek influence throughout these boys, definitely. They have some Greek-style uh, cloaks, some Thracian-style cloaks as well. So you've got a bit of Thracian and Greek, but very much Greek armor, Greek helm style as well. Um, and the only thing sort of Thracian is a bit of their clasping um, and a bit of their look as well. Uh, so, very Greek-looking unit, but very cool, nonetheless. Next to them, though, we have a standard Macedonian Hoplite unit, which is pretty cool. And these guys, of course, look very Greek because they are Greek in style and everything else. And, yeah, we've seen a lot of Hoplite units, haven't we? Got Cerberus over there. The Minotaur, very cool. Nice-looking shields and red going throughout these guys, which is a great color, isn't it? To go on a military unit. 14 morale, 10 melee attack, and 33 defense. So pretty standard in terms of hoplites as hoplites go. So probably not the unit you want to get. You want to get the Rom for Foray instead. But if you want some Greek style units as the Thracians, this is the faction for you. Next to them, we have the Theroperoi. So just standard Theroperoi for these boys as well. And 34 defense, 14 morale, 12 melee attack, and 13 missile attack. And these guys, a lot of whites going through these guys. And you can see the standard linothorax that they have, or the linothoraces, should I say, in plural. Uh, very cool, indeed. So just standard Theroperoi for these boys, because they were a Macedonian colony. And of course, when it, you have a Greek colony, who else do you need other than the Zistaphoroi. Yes, here we are. And again, standard Greek-looking unit. Very nice. Fully Greek, these boys, in terms of their look, as we can see back here. But again, a nice unit. We've seen the Zistaphoroi many times before, so we don't really need to go through the stats. But yeah, cool unit, nonetheless, to have as a Thracian, Thracian faction. So let's move on to our last couple of units. And uh, trust me, guys, we've left the best till last. You are going to be interested when you see these boys. I tell you, I tell you, one of my favorite units in the game. Um, and that's saying a lot because I've got, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of fantastic units in the game. So let's move across to Trebali. The Trebali were a heavily Celticized during and after the Galatian invasion. And this is where they are located. That's why they were heavily uh, Celticized, as you can see. And of course, this unit is there to represent their mixed culture. And of course, it will be updated with more variants um, and more Celtic units in this faction when they get to move on to the Celts in future updates. And honestly, I love the look of these boys. Very Celtic looking sword that they've got there. A big Thurios shield with that as well. So not Celtic at all, more, th more Greek. 
and Thracian. And the Thracian designs on here with these sorts of helms that we've not seen a huge amount of as well. Really cool looking helms, but the Thracian cloaks and colors and patterns once again. And I do love the look of the sword. Very big sword. Again, these guys, they all have big swords, okay, guys? They all have big swords. Um, all of them. Uh, but yes, Galato-Thracian Warpant. Oh, I love trolling. <laughs> oh, I'm just taking the mitt, guys. But yeah, they do all have, you know, a lot of the units have big swords. Um, but yeah, 13 morale, 15 melee attack, which is fantastic. Not armor-piercing this time, though. And 30 defense with 15 charge for these boys. These boys are scary boys on the charge. 8 shield, 4 armor, but 18 defense skill as well. They've got a couple of javies to fire at the enemy. And they have a war cry, like many of the Celts as well, which will increase their attack on the charge. So quite a scary infantry unit on the charge. And once again, we're going back to that fact that shock units and armor piercing units and heavy attack units are what the Thracians are about. And that's probably why I love them so much. In case you don't know, guys, my two favorite types of units in this time period in this game are horse archer cataphracts, or, you know, horse archers and cataphracts. Kind of, I equally love them both. But my second favorite is heavy infantry. I love a heavy infantry unit. <laughs> Absolutely love them. So let's move on to the AOR units of the... Thynoi Clubmen. The Thynoi were brothers of the Bithynians. The Thyni, so Bithyni, um, and they will mainly be recru recruited in Salmidesos. And yes, <laughs> we've literally got the Fred Flintstones of the ancient world into the game, boys. Look at these boys. They literally just have a club. <laughs> just a wooden club ready to beat you to death with that's how confident they are in battle they don't need a sharp blade all they need is a bit of wood fashioned into a big club and they will be absolutely fine as i say one of my favorite new units in the game pretty much just for that reason they literally just have a club and uh, <laughs> this guy looks rather sad about the fact that he only has a club but everyone else is looking pretty uh pretty menacing nonetheless and yeah you know the stats aren't amazing at uh, one armor and you can tell they don't have a lot of armor uh, like we can see here uh but yeah 16 defense skills good nonetheless and 21 defense overall is okay 12 mor morale uh, 10 melee attack they are fast moving as well but eight missile attack with a seven javis so what they are is a club version of the thracian peltas and I absolutely love it. They're not armor-piercing, unfortunately. But yes, who can't wait to have a full stack of Thynoi Clubmen <laughs> clubbing the enemy to death? Honestly, someone needs to do that video. It might be me, but <laughs> yeah. Someone needs to do that test. How good are the Thynoi Clubmen? And uh, they are cool, though, aren't they? I love them. <laughs> the Thynoi Clubmen. I told you we saved the best till last, guys. And again, they look fantastic, don't they? Really, really cool. Um, but yes, I think we're there. We're spinning around, but I think we are at the end, guys. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. Comment down below your favorite unit of the Thracians. And I know there's a lot of amazing units to choose from. The Thynoi Clubman, the Infantry Guard... Some of these uh, units, like the Seeker Cavalry, the Pionian Cavalry, are just fantastic. The DI Swordsman, got to be a personal favorite from me as well. Very cool unit, nonetheless. Really fantastic uh, unit. Um, and yeah, it has been a pleasure, guys. So please do like and subscribe. All that good stuff. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.